Hello viewers, my name is Otonai Manyore. I am coming to you from Zimbabwe and Mashonaland East, where we are going to have an episode on peas production, which is specifically meant for the export market. Now in Mashonaland East, we have rainfall patterns ranging from 870 millimeters to 1,100 millimeters, which is suitable for any cropping venture, be it cereal crops, horticultural crops, that is the peas and tobacco production. To discuss this and more, I have taken the liberty of inviting Mr. Herbert Nyakujga. He is the operations manager here at this farm where they are producing peas for the export market. Mr. Nyakujia, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Yes. As I've alluded to earlier, we are going to be talking of uh, peas specifically for the export market. You are producing for the export market. Maybe a brief background of this setup. What did it take for you to come up with this setup? Well, uh, thank you. This setup was established about four years ago. And uh, it was a setup that was meant to complement the original uh, cultural practice uh, crops that were being produced on the farm. So to bring high value to the entity, the idea came up that we should also try and do export marketing. I got that idea, but I just joined in the past two years. Okay. That's where I took up from. Okay, thank you so much, Herbert. Let us talk about the varieties. I understand that this establishment, you have uh, different varieties that you are producing, that you are growing. What are they and they probably their management, the yield per hectare? Thank you. Uh, what we produce here is a snap pea, what is called a snap pea. Okay. Which is different from the shelling and which is different from the uh, initial pea that is eaten like that. Okay. So on the snap peas, we have got uh, the sugar snap peas, and then we also have the munched out peas that okay. we produce here. Uh, on the sugar snaps, we specifically deal with super sugar snap peas, that's what we produce. And on the munched twos, we have got three varieties that we deal with the sweet horizon being the main dominant one, and then we also do a uh, snowstorm and uh, sugarless peas as okay. well. Okay. In terms of yield? In terms of yield, uh, what we are targeting to get for profitability sake is on the sugar snaps we aim to sell. That is, we are talking of sold tonnage will be 10 tons per hectare. So on this entity where we are producing uh, at a rate of 30 hectares at a given time, we are aiming to sell 300 kgs. Okay, per hectare? Uh, no, 300 kgs in all. Okay. 10 tons per hectare. So okay. this is a 30 hectare entity. Thank you so much, Herbert. In terms of soil, I understand that soil has a great impact when it comes to production, production systems, when it comes to a cropping ventures, be it even livestock. What type of soil uh, promotes or supports the growth and the production of this piece? Mm, thank you. Uh, looking at uh, the region that we are in, which is region two, Marshall and East. Uh, mainly, it's dominated by loam soils. Okay. They might vary loam to clay, but in this particular entity, we have got uh, sandy looms, which are very easy to manage because of uh, their porosity. They drain very well, so you can manage whatever you want to do, be it cultivation, be it irrigation, and also the temperatures here contribute quite a lot to the. Uh, well-being of the crop. You spoke of irrigation when you talked of uh, your soil type, saying mm -hmm. that it supports any form of irrigation. Let us talk about the water requirements. What does this sugar pea or the snap pea require in terms of water management and water requirements? Thank you. As uh, you can see, this is a snap pea. Yes. Which shows that it comprises mainly of water. So water is very key in production of uh, this pea here. So on the setup, we have uh, set up pivot irrigation, which is one of the most efficient irrigation systems. And we also complement that with about 10 hectares of our area here is covered by drip irrigation. Okay. Those are the two types of irrigation that we use because we are in production of peas, you should never ever go below 50% supply of moisture to the crop. Okay. In terms of um, nutritional requirements to support the proper growth and the yield that you expect per hectare or per unit area, what do you use in terms of fertilizers, 
chemical applications. What do you use to support the health establishment that you have here? On our piece here, the nutritional requirements, uh, maybe to put it in units of NPK, we are looking at 135 units of nitrogen and we are also looking at 287 units of phosphorus and then potash we are looking at it might be 115 or thereabouts okay units. these units we will get after applying uh, like the culture that we do here we have got a basal dressing that su uh, supplies most of our p and k okay which is the phosphorus and the potash that we apply at 500 kgs per hectare then we also have MAP, which we, which we apply at uh, 200 kgs per hectare. That does most of our phosphorus and uh, potash supply. But throughout the, the growing uh, season of the crop, we are always supplementing with other fertilizers. These will be straight fertilizers that we supply through drip or fertigation through the pivots, okay. which is uh, calcium phosphate, uh, potash, magnesium, and the other uh, minor elements we supply through foliar sprays. Okay, that's, that's which nice. leads me to my next question here, but uh, our export markets have expectations. Some of them uh, prefer organic productions, organic foods, organic products, as compared to uh, the use of heavy chemicals. How are you ensuring that you satisfy your export market, given that you do use artificial fertilizers? How do you ensure that you satisfy them, you give them what they want, what they demand? Uh, as a prerequisite, when you are getting into export marketing, you rehearse with your customer, and they state the standards. Okay. Let's go to fertilizers. There are minimum residual levels that they expect to get out of the crop once it's going for consumption. Okay. Those are set. And when you are setting up your nutritional requirement of the crop, that is the nutritional budget, you take into cognizance the minimum residual level that they set. Okay. Uh, which also implies to the chemicals that we use, because you talked of uh, IPM and organics, it goes hand in hand. We also practice IPM, which is integrated pest management. We okay. just don't spray chemicals only. We also go with biologicals. Okay, where sure. people scout. Yeah, we have got a scouting team. Okay. It's out on a weekly basis, giving us results of what it needs to be done. And we also have focused of what we expect into the season and we take care of that before the, the occurrence of the, the infestation. Okay. Where by this I mean if it is biologicals we apply before the infected the plant is in, uh, affected. Okay. So we take care of that. Thank you so much Herbert. <laughs> Welcome back viewers, you are watching a program where we are speaking of peas production in Zimbabwe specifically for the export market. Now viewers, we encourage you to be a part of these conversations. Feel free to get in touch with me, the producer Wazana Emanyore. It's on plus 263-772-807-506. Alternatively, you can like our Facebook page, Agribusiness with Wazanae. We are also available on Twitter and our Twitter handle there is at Agribusiness110. We are also available on YouTube. You can make a follow up on these episodes and leave your comments and suggestions on agribusiness with Wazanai. Now, earlier on, before we went to the break, Herbert here was telling us of the requirements, the expectations of the export market, and how they intend to meet those. Herbert, we are in the second segment of our program. Welcome back. Thank you. Yes. We want to talk about certification, which aligns this production to what the export market, your export customers require or expect from you. Let us talk about certification. Uh, talking about certification, what the export markets are looking at is uh, good standards in, across all production cycles. What I mean is this, there is good labor relations, 
That means we have got to follow all the Zimbabwean rules of labor management, or should I say, uh, adhering to employment standards okay. according to the government of Zimbabwe. That's the other part, where we are uh, audited and we get certification from the Ethical Trading Initiative okay. who will come and audit around the place, check. They will be uh, actually talking to the employees to find out whether they are being ill-treated or not to make sure that we don't exploit anyone in this production cycle. Okay. So that means the standards will be in favor of working conditions which are good and favorable for the workers. That's the first part of ethical trading initiative. We also have got global gap standards. We also are uh, audited on global gap standards and we get certification from there where actually auditors will have to come onto site and inspect the areas that of concern that have got impact on environmental or human uh, degradation systems. Okay. I mean uh, systems that will not enhance sustainable agriculture or exploit other uh, resources around the place. Okay. Then we also have uh, some other customers like uh, Max and Spencer, they will be interested as well to come and see the standards that we use to make sure that there is no exploitation, there is no uh, degradation and Maybe, can I put it as, as, as enslavement of people? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much. Sure. I like that you are working <laughs> with the community. You are employing them and you are giving them an opportunity to make a living out of ah, their labor without right. exploiting them. That is very commendable, uh, Herbert. Now I want us to talk about sustainability. You, okay. In terms, when you talk of certification, you kept mentioning sustainability, not exploiting the laborers or exploiting the environment or in the name of producing for export markets. In terms of sustainability, how are you ensuring that this enterprise is sustainable and it is in line with environmental expectations? Thank you. Uh, this entity, first of all, we take into cognizance uh, the impact or the risk risks that can be encountered where sustainability will not be a thing yes. to count on. Let's look at the environment, that is the trees, the in fact the vegetation, the rivers, the waterways, and even the soil that we till on. We need to keep it alive, should I say, so that even the future generations will live in a living environment. So whenever we are doing any agricultural activity we make sure that first of all we take a risk assessment to see what risks are associated to this activity and then we study around it and see how we can go around the risk or minimize it and then think of ways of improving to make sure that we don't put anything at risk that uh, also encompasses wildlife in this uh, entity here we actually have got a wildlife in that mountain across there. Okay. And anyone seen with any weapon that can be used <laughs> against wildlife will actually be taken to police. Okay. And we also have got all the government supporting uh, organizations like uh, the, the EMA, Environmental, Environmental Management, Management, Agency. Management, Management Agencies. They also come across and check on the water bodies where we are getting our water for irrigation here to make sure that we are not uh, putting anything at risk by the activities that we are doing on the farm. Thank you so much, Herbert. You were telling us on how you are living in harmony with the environment and farming with future generations in mind, which entails taking care of the soil and not extracting all minerals from the soil, leaving it exhausted. I want us to touch briefly on handling. This is food we are talking about. As I'm standing here, I'm consuming these peas and I might say they are very tasty. They are healthy. They are, you know, lowering my taste buds. Right. I want us to talk about handling this is food from Zimbabwe being exported further away across seas and people there trust to consume this and ask for more in terms of handling what do you have in place given to the workers your laborers that those that handle this food to ensure that those that uh, consume it are, are not at risk of uh, diseases or infections thank you 
Uh, the motto on the farm is that when we are setting up a setup like this, like I said, we always go around and say we have got an activity like this which is going to be taking place. We assess it, check on the risks around it, and then set up modalities to sort of encounter that. So what we do here is we have got healthy and safe personnel okay. who are trained and certified, who are always training people, not only on food handling, but on personal hygiene and uh, everything to do with high personal hygiene and safety of the person to make sure that he's safe wherever he is working or wherever he or she is working. So the health and safety person ensures that every time he is going around, he makes a report of whatever is going wrong in terms of hygiene and health and safety. As well, what we do when we are picking the peas or when we are working in the lands, the system is that every time the health and safety has got to train the people before they get to any Into activity. the field, okay. They have got to be trained, they have got to be conscientized of what they should encounter. We have got some other issues where we have got people who might be ill, that person identifies them, that can also be a source of infection. contamination or infection onto them. But on training, he has got to identify those people or else they come to the open and say, I am not well. And those people are put away from where we are working with uh, okay. peas. Okay. So that's the duty of the health and safety, but is also complemented by each poor person who is working with a group. That's a prerequisite. These people are also being trained periodically by the health and safety person to make sure that they know food handling practices as well as personal hygiene. Thank you so much, Herbert. There you had it, viewers. We are going to go on a short commercial break. We'll be right back with this and more in the third and final segment. Stay tuned. Thank you viewers for staying tuned to this program where we are talking about production of export peas. Peas that are being produced in Zimbabwe and Mashonaland East specifically for the export market. They've been in this business for the past four years and their customers, those that consume this peas, seem to be happy because the business is very lucrative, it is thriving even this COVID times. Speaking of COVID habit, uh, what measures do you have in place to ensure the safety of yourself, the workers, and to ensure that the product that you are exporting to the other countries is safe and is not contaminated. Thank you. Uh, what the company has done, when the disease was first pronounced that it has come into Zimbabwe, or before it came into Zimbabwe, just at conscientizing people, the health and safety guy that I was talking about previously was also taken into some refresher courses where he was taught about this, but uh, he was also accompanied by a few other uh, senior guys in the post to make sure that uh, they complement the implementation of uh, the requirements of uh, reducing or else checking the COVID-19 uh, spread. So what the company did was it followed all the regulations that were being uh, recommended by the government from the World Health Organization that is uh, keeping of uh, social distance, wearing of masks and washing of hands. To, uh, to this effect, what the company did was to buy in disinfectants and uh, also sanitizers. And it bought a, a whole range of masks for the workers. We also have got uh, thermometers to test our labor. Uh, once the truck that goes and ferries them to, to the workplace has gone out, the driver has got a bottle of sanitizer. Each person before boarding is sanitized come on on reaching on to the farm they go through one gate where everyone is tested uh, is uh, checked the temperature and then is sanitized check if everybody has good that that's the work of the health and safety guy he checks that everybody has got his mask so in a particular day the working environment of each group is assessed 
where people are going to be maybe working uh, crowdedly, it's now up to the senior person to see how he is going to observe the social distancing. Okay. But he makes sure that everybody is adhering to the mask wearing and the social distance. But the supervisor is responsible for checking throughout the day who and what is happening. When these vaccinations came in, the company actually took it a step further and requested for on-site service of okay. vaccinations. Okay. So the vaccination uh, group was actually ferried to the farm by the farm uh, truck to go around in every working area, not forcing everybody, but encouraging everybody to, to get, get vaccinated. vaccinated for their own but safety. We actually saw that we had quite a good number or percentage of people who volunteered to have their uh, to take their vaccinations, and this includes yourself, myself, everybody else around. <laughs> it would be just a few. But what we are also doing is, as we go around, the health and safety person, if he identifies or suspects anyone to be suffering from this, we have got a clinic that is quite nearby, where it's just about a 10 minutes walk, Okay. just about three kilometers away from the farm, where they can go and get tested. Okay. And then we just take the recommended procedures according to the government uh, recommendation of the World Health Organization. How long does it take for the sugar pea, sugar snap pea to mature? The sugar pea in weeks. Okay. Uh, from week of planting to first flower is seven weeks. We expect the first fruit in nine weeks. Okay. Nine weeks, first flower, 10 weeks we are into reaping. Okay. And then it's producing most of its uh, product then, but we expect it to go up to 16 weeks. Okay. So I'm saying we can repeat for six weeks or seven weeks. Okay, thank you so much, Herbert. Speaking of, uh, and I'm seeing that you are using these poles for trellising. <clears throat> Our audience, they might want to know, aren't you using the indigenous trees affecting the environment? Where do you source these uh, tree, these uh, poles for trellising? Thank you. Uh, the entity, like I said, has had quite... Uh, a lot of research into how to sustain okay. all the activities around here. We have got flays that are close to the uh, water source, which okay. is the big dam, one of the biggest in, in the region. So those flays are the ones that we utilized to establish gum plantations. Okay. That's where we get our wood. Uh, our so you have from. a gum plantation, which is an exotic source it's an exotic for these. Source. Are... Okay. Correct. I want us to touch on storage facilities, these are consumed as fresh and they cannot go a day or more or just a few hours in the open after being uh, removed from the parent plant. How do you store, how do you handle, how do you take care of this product just up to uh, transporting it to its final destination? The first thing is that the pea should look after itself because it has favored the, the winter season to grow. Yes. So the temperatures then we expect will be low. But what we do now to complement to that is that when we are reaping, that is the, the harvesting part of the, the, the peas, the reaper has got to harvest not more than three kgs and okay. it takes them. What we do is we establish some uh, stations in the lands which are not a hundred meters away from each other. Okay. So the reaper has got to take that uh, his produce to that reaping station where someone is already waiting to weigh and put into a container and then that's transported to the refrigerators and it doesn't take anything above an hour. Okay. From reaping to get to the cold storage. It was a pleasure having you with us today, Herbert. You did give us valuable information on production of peas, specifically meant for the export market. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much. There you had it, viewers. This was production of peas, specifically for the export market, taking place here in Zimbabwe, Mashona Land East, which is being produced during the winter season. From me, was Zanai Manyore. I'm also on Instagram. It's a W Manyore. And the crew behind the scenes. Have yourselves a fabulous evening. Thank you for watching.